This will be part two of the lab project demonstration for the message instructions. Keep in mind that you probably don't have these lab projects to even do because they're not in the newer manual because it ate up 30 pages and you had to own a bunch of hardware in order to do them. So we knew that most people would not be able to actually do the lab projects. So we're putting in these lectures as a bonus, as a freebie, uh, so you get the benefit of a discussion on the message instructions for SIP messaging. So let's jump into part two. Welcome back. This is part two of message instructions. And in the first part, we added I.O. to both of our controllers to our projects. We created two projects in RS Logics 5000 version 20. Now I just want to reiterate here that due to the nature of RS Logics 5000, the variety of versions, the variety of hardware, the difficulty of owning a license and owning hardware, there is a lot more latitude that we have to deal with when we do these projects. So I'm showing you here the hardware that I have to, that I have to use while I'm doing this lab book and these video recordings. So we added I.O. to both processors, discrete and analog. We also created these two entities in our controller environment, our controller neighborhood or community, if you will. And each of these two entities has Ethernet interfaces. Now the L35E is a complete package, meaning now, it's not complete because it doesn't have a power supply. The L35E has Ethernet built into the processor, into the plastic housing of the processor, and has a, an RJ45 or an Ethernet port on the front of the processor. Whereas on the right, the L45 does not have anything but an RS-232 port on the front of it, and you have to add an Ethernet interface into the passive back plane, which is to the left of the processor. And then to the right, you have an active back plane for your I.O. module. So when you look at the L35 on the left, it has a built-in Ethernet card, and it shows up in a little green rectangle there that's leaning at an angle that looks like a daughter card that you might plug into the motherboard of a tower. Well, that daughter card is built right into the processor, and it has one bus called Compact Bus Local, and to that you can add 1769 bulletin I.O. modules, whereas the L45 has two backplanes, or two buses, as you see, 1768 bus and 1769 bus. Well, the 1769 bus of the L45 in the compact bus local for the 35, those are identical. But in addition, the L45 has an additional bus, the 1768 bus, and to that you can add up to four 1768 modules. Those could be motion modules or communication modules. Actually, the motion modules are communication modules. They're Circos fiber optic ring interfaces. To both of these controllers, we do have Ethernet interfaces. One came built and the other we added. This gives us a method to connect these two entities together, PAC L35E and PAC L45, so that they can communicate with each other. The first thing that we had to do is we had to make each of the controllers aware of the other controller and aware of how to find the other controller. First we took the details of the L45 and added it into the I.O. configuration of the L35E. So you can see that on the right the 1768 bus and the ENBT module now shows up in the L35E on the left. We did the right click new module and we added 
the other controller into the I.O. configuration of each of these two controllers. The PAC L35E, it's aware of the L45, but the L45 is not aware of the L35E. We do for the L45 what we did for the L35E. We add the L35E into the PAC L45 I.O. configuration. Add a cable between the two. You could use a crossover cable. Plug one end of the cable into each of these two Ethernet ports and that would complete the configuration hardware-wise or we use cables and a switch. Either way, we now have a community of controllers. You probably recognize this. This is RS Links fully expanded for our little project here. This is the Ethernet hardware. In RS Links, it just shows up as a line, but everything going from the Ethernet port of your computer to the Ethernet ports on these processors is Ethernet hardware, and that would include switches. Now, you see one device there that we haven't talked about yet, and that's at Ethernet IP 192.168.1.112. That's a Micrologix 1100. We'll include that later on. We also have Ethernet interfaces, and of course the switch is invisible. So there is a switch in here that all of these devices are plugged into. You need to get used to looking at this I.O. configuration and looking at RS Link's full expanded. And there is a slight difference because it's, it's from a point of view. In this case, we are standing back and looking at RS Links, and we have expanded the Ethernet driver to expose all of the paths available over Ethernet that the driver has access to. But when you're looking at the I.O. configuration of an individual project, you have to always be conscious that these are not Ethernet devices. They're not in the path. They are graphic placeholders. You are reminded the relationship of the devices and the slot numbers. So if you look up under Backplane Compact Logics under the PAC L35E, the top red square, that daughter card that shows in slot one is what's in slot one. However, that actual card is up a couple levels at 192.168.1.111. That is the Ethernet port. That is the Ethernet device. But if you are looking across the back plane, they need a graphic placeholder in there to remind you of what's in slot one. That's the only reason it's there. And same thing down on the bottom. It shows slot one, the ENBT. But the ENBT is actually up a little higher because you are coming from the Ethernet driver. The entrance into the L45 is on the Ethernet port on the ENBT. So the, the bottom orange horizontal box is the ENBT. From the ENBT, you go into the back plane. From the back plane, you go across the back plane to the L45, and you can also go across the back plane to the MO4SE Circos card. If you go to the processor, you can go through the processor, because remember that the 1768 modules are to the left of the processor, and everything else is to the right. So if you go through the processor, or we'll say into the processor, you have two paths. You can go out channel zero DF1, or you can go into the compact bus, the 1769 bus, and there you find your I.O. modules. But notice that the L45 processor is again shown in slot zero. So it shows up twice in this tree. Now I know I've been through this a half a dozen times before in these lab discussions and lectures, but I cannot overemphasize that you learn to read these I.O. configurations or communication trees very clearly. Well, the first part, that was the easy part, but it does require some planning so you get your IP addresses right 
and you keep track of who's on first and who's on second. So great, we have controllers that are capable of talking and a means or path of communications. However, the one thing we have not done is provided these two controllers with anything to any subject matter or any data to communicate with. So the next thing we need to do is to add some data or some information to each of these controllers. So in the lab I had you add four tags to each of the controllers. Now I'm going to add one tag uh, just as a review for you and then I'm going to pause and add in the other three tags and then I'll switch over to the L45 and do the same thing. So we're in the L35E now. So we went to the uh, controller tag database, double click, there's the IO. We went down the bottom and select edit tags and then we go to the empty tag field and we typed in data in memory of underscore L35 E and then we did another underscore and zero zero. This implies that we might have more than one data structure in the memory of the L35E. And the reason that we gave it the name data in the memory of the L35E is so you know where that data is coming from or you know where the data is originating. And then of course 00, zero the next would be 0, 01, zero, 02 and so on. That's just a habit I have of adding double zeros to the end in case I want to create another structure later and make it 01. We could get away with leaving this as a dent. The problem is later on when we want to expand and we want to communicate with more than one double integer at a time, then we have to go back and do a little extra work. We may even have to delete the tag and recreate it. Instead we'll create it as a single element array right up front. We go here and we type in one. See now it says dent and then in brackets it says one. So that's very easy to expand. Later on you just come back and change this to a five, a 10, 40, 100, however many elements you want in that array. Okay, so there we've created our first subject matter for the L35E. Well, the L35E has this information available for anyone that would like it from another controller. So I'm going to pause and add in the other three tags. Okay, here we have all four tags. We have data in memory of L35E. We have data spoken to memory of L45. Data taken from memory of L45 and listen to data from L45. L45 is mentioned three times data from the L45 and the first L45 is data that originates in the L35 and it's spoken to the memory of the L45. So we try to use prepositions here to of and from to clarify where this data is coming from and where it's going to. So now we're going to create these exact same four tags in the memory of the L45 except that the names will be reversed instead of L35 you could say you can take out the 35E and replace it with 45 or take out the 45 and replace it with 35E in the other controller. Um, I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to take and hold the mouse down here, drag it down, do a control C and then I'm going to open up the other project which is the L45 go up to the controller tags go to edit tags down at the bottom select that empty field and do con control V now I copied those four tags and their definitions from the L35E and pasted them into the L45 so now I have to go and change 35E to 45 and then change 45 to 35E. Now I could just copy the first 35E and paste it in front of over 45 but it's easier just to type in 35E. Now I did not have you do this in the lab when you were actually doing the project 
I didn't have you do it this way. Because you need as much practice as possible creating tags in the tag structures of the Logix engine. Because the tags are the single greatest uniqueness of the Logix engine. If you're used to PLC5, Slick 500s, Micrologix, it is the new tag structures that throw everyone. So the more practice you get, the better. Okay, so now we have tags added to both of the controllers so they both have something as far as a subject for conversation. Now, of course, these registers are empty. They're all zeros, so there's actually no data in there yet. Again, what is unique of these tags in this particular exercise in both processors is the implicitness of the text, clearly identifying where the data originated. Data in memory of L45, data spoken to, both of which originate in the L45. The other two tags are data from the other processor's memory, either taken or heard from. Both processors speak data, and the other processor listens to it. So you could say that the data spoken to memory of L35e, that's coming from the mouth of the L45. Listen to data from L35e, those are the ears of the L45. And the other data is outside of conversation. Data in memory of L45, that is data that you can go read, but it's not part of conversation. Now, I know that's uh, splitting hairs, but as we do the message instructions, you'll see the difference. Someone has to speak first. So we'll, we've been starting with the L35e, so let's go back to the L35e, and we'll start with them. So we're going to open up the main routine. See, there's nothing in it right now. And we're going to add a couple instructions. We're going to add a true if off, and we're going to add a message. Now, I can go down here to input output group and grab message, or I could have just double clicked and then typed in XIO space MSG, hit enter, and I would have had the same thing. Typically, I just create a new rung and go up here and type in XIO space MSG, enter simply because I'm too lazy to go up here and drill around on these tabs trying to find these instructions. I had you add this, and then I had you type in a tag name for message control. And this was speak to L45 underscore message zero zero, because we might want to speak more than one piece of data to the L45. And if we did, the next message would have a message control tag identical to this, but instead of 00, zero it would be zero 01. So we right-click on this, New, and of course we want it in the controller tags. It has to be in there. Create. Now that we've created this tag, we can simply drag the tag over here. The E's are still there because this is not acceptable. We have to click at the end of it and type in dot e n. Watch the E's. As soon as it's accepted it, it recognizes that is a legitimate tag because it's an element of the message control tag, then the rung is instantly happy. We're not done. <laughs> We've got a message control tag, but we don't have a message structure. So we click on the configuration dialog and bring up the first of three tabs. Now we're not going to do anything with that tab that says tag, but we will have to do something with configuration and communication. So we're going to use a SIP data table write. Remember the name of this is speak to L45. So we're going to do a SIP data table write. And notice that when you uh, pick different, it was SIP generic, if you're going to do SIP generic then you have to define all of this information because it's generic. But when you do a SIP data table write, that is all implicit or implied in the, in the configuration. After we pick SIP, SIP data table write, then we need to pick a tag. Now notice that only one of these has a drop down list arrow. That's because the destination element is in the other controller. You can't drill down 
inside of this controller to find a tag that's in another controller. So we will pick the one that's easiest to pick first. And this is going to be data spoken to memory of the L45. If we go to data spoken to memory of L45, expand that, because remember, this is a single element array. And we have to have the element, not the parent tag. Click there. So now we have a source element. That data is going to be spoken to the L45. Now we have to put in the destination element. Well, remember, we created tags in the other project. And this is spoken to the L45. And we want it to go to the tag that's listened from the L35E. You could go copy that tag out of the other project. Normally, I would probably have both these projects up side by side and do just copy paste and going back and forth. But in the field, you're more, most likely going to do it this way. You're going to have to remember what that tag was, the exact spelling. Now that's the name of the tag in the other processor. Listen to data from L35E. You're in the L35. From the L35, since we're coming from the L35E, we want to take the data that's in the tag data spoken to memory of L45, because that's where we want it to go. That's the data we're speaking to the L45, and we want to put it in the tag in the L45 that says listen to data from L35E. It's very easy to get these tags confused. And there's probably some other structures that might be more palatable to your sensitivities. And if you did something different in the lab because you liked other grammar or other nouns better, that's fine. Whatever is easiest to keep track of. So we have a source that's in the L35E, and it's going to a destination element in the L45 that the L45 sees is from the L35E. Other than IP addresses, this is the only other manual transfer that you have to do. When I say transfer, I mean information or data that you arbitrarily created and you have to transfer it from one point to another in your process. So you must enter tag names from the other processor either from your memory or from notes. It's a, a, it's a good idea to create a chart and then take it from notes rather than just trying to remember what you typed in when you created it in the other controller. Or like I do, I bring both projects up on the screen to copy the tag names for one project and paste them into the other. The other thing that we have to do is we have to go to the communications tab and we need to browse to find our destination. You could just type in the path and later on in the manual I, I show you how to define that path. One of the beauties of the Logix engine and using processors that are all part of that platform is that once we've added them into the IO configuration then we can simply browse to find them. So remember we want to add the L45 to our L35E project by way of Ethernet. So see here's our L35E, Ethernet, ENBT, 1768 bus, and the L45. So we click there, the name pops up, and now our path is defined. Apply and OK. OK, now I'm going to um, leave just the tag database open. And I'm going to compress. This is the L35E. And I'm going to open up. Well, we want to go to monitor tags. So I'm going to open up each of these tags. Now this tag we won't open right here because this is the message tag. So there's the data that we're interested in. And you can see it's all zeros right now. So I'm going to collapse that back down just a little. Make this a little smaller. Bring this in. And then I'm going to take this project and pull it over. something like that and then go to monitor tags 
expand the four. Remember, we, we haven't um, put any message instructions in the L45 yet, so we don't have this message tag. We have it here in the L35E, but not over here in the L45. So that's why there's one more tag here than over here. This is what we have so far. I.O. configuration that includes the other's Ethernet devices. And then we have a set of data, some to write, some to read, and some to listen on both sides. So we're going to save both projects. Edit. Whoops. File. Save. File save. We're going to download both projects and go online with both projects. So we'll go up to, we'll download the L35E first. Communications, who active. We want the L35E, so that's this Ethernet port right here, back plane, and we point to the PAC L35E. Now we can set the project path. We might as well do that. If you set the project path, then this path right here is automatically associated with this project. So we're going to download. Download. Downloading. Okay, we're not going to change it back to the remote run mode. So we'll say no, that leaves it in the program mode. Then we go over to the L45, communications, who active, expand our Ethernet driver, go to the 1768 EMBT backplane to the processor, set the project path, and say download. Download. That happens once in a while. I probably should have left that message up there for you to read. But occasionally that message pops up because something wasn't ready to complete the download. Okay, down, done downloading? Uh, no. We're going to leave them both in the program mode so we can look. See, here's some data that doesn't belong in there. Type in a zero. So we see they're both set at zero. Okay, now we'll put the L45 into the run mode and we'll put the L35 into the run mode. Now remember we only have one message instruction that's speak to L45. So if we want to speak to the L45 we have to have data spoken to memory of L45. So we could just put something in here, hit enter, and you see it instantly pops up over here. So we'll do that again. Now this message instruction is executing, you know, hundreds of times per second. So it's going to change the value in the register of the L45 just as fast as you hit enter in the L35E. So listen to data from L35E. That's the tag that the data that is spoken to the L45 is going to come from. So whatever we put in here, and of course that's too big for a, no, that's, that's good for a double integer. We can put that in there. See, that's what pops up over here. Now we're a little congested here in our... There we've demonstrated a write message from the L35E to the L45. So any value we put in here is going to pop in over here in the L45. So at this point, uh, save both projects and go offline with just the PA, just with PAC L45 and select the edit tabs, the edit tags tab down here when you get offline with this project. We'll leave this one online and we'll go offline with this one. So I always save
we didn't do anything to require saving, but it's just a good habit to get into. So we saved both of these. Now we're going to go offline. And now we're going to cheat. This project is online. The L35E is online. The L45 is not. It's offline. We're going to go over here to, remember I told you to select Edit Tags tab. So you have an empty field here. We're going to go over here and we're going to drag our cursor through that tag name. Do Control C or you can do right click copy if you want. Then we're going to go over here and do a Control V and paste it in there. Now remember this is just text. You could be copying this right out of a Word document or a PDF or anything. It's just text. This is the message control tag. We want to change 45 to 35E. And we want it to be a message data type. So we go over here and type in ME. And that gives us message. Hit enter. And now we've got that tag created. The idea of doing the reason for doing it this way is to keep some consistency in your naming structure. Well, both tags look identical except one says speak to L45, the other says speak to L35E. There was no other benefit in copying that text and pasting it over in the L45 other than keeping the structure the same. Well, now we've um, edited the name to say L35E and we have selected it as a message data type. So now let's open up both routines, the main routine here. And we'll drag this a little over, over a little further. Then go over here to this one, open up the main routine. And drag this over. Matter of fact, we'll just drag them over as far as we can. It won't let you go all the way. So I was going to leave a little space. Okay, I'll leave a little more than that so you don't forget it's there. Okay, so we can switch the focus back and forth between these two projects. So now I'm going to take them and right click, Control C, click, Control V. Actually, I misspoke. It's just click, Control C, click, Control V. We're going to delete this uh, unfinished rung up there. Now we want to change the name and you can always drag this out a little bit. So this should be 35 and I can put in a lowercase e. It still knows what it is. And then go over here. 35e. Now I see why it wasn't happy. Need a 35 in there. Okay, now it's happy. I wonder why the rung didn't immediately go happy. Now, you probably would never make a typo like me, but occasionally I do something like that. So I'm looking and I'm thinking, oh, this one's happy and this one's not. And this one's a member of this tag, except I had a lowercase e in there instead of a 3. So now we have to go configure this message instruction just like we did the other. Okay, now this is not how I had you do it in the lab. So I'm going to keep these both open so you can see as much as possible. And I am going to drag this further over because I need every bit of space I can get. And still stay inside of my window. This is the one that's running and is configured. Okay, this one is not configured. And we want to configure this one to look just like this one. Remember, this is speaking to the L45, and this one is speaking to the L35E. So we want to go SIP, Data Table Write, and the source element is going to look just like that, but it's going to say Data Spoken To Memory of L35E, which we can drill down, Data Spoken To Memory of L35E. Double click. This one's happy. Now this one is going to look just like that except it's going to say L45. So and I'm going to take that one, Control C, come over here, Control V, 
make that a 45. There is something else missing here. And that is, we're only working with single element arrays, but if this was more than one element, it would be a problem. Uh, we're going to add bracket, zero bracket. We're going to go to communications. And we're going to browse down, and we want the L35E controller for this one. So see, this one speaks, writes to the L45, this one writes to the L35. Apply and OK. So now we want to download this to the L45. OK, now that we've added this message instruction. Communications, who active? L45, because remember we set the project path. So we go download. But we're not going to go back to the run mode yet. I see something over here that I had you do in lab, but I see that I didn't do it here, and that is add in. I don't know if it'll let me do this while I'm running. Nope. Program mode. Configuration. Add the uh, first element, which is really the only element. Now go back to the run mode. Put this one in the run mode. Open up the controller tags. We're in monitor tags. That's good. Then go over to this one. Open up the controller tags and we're in monitor tags. And we need to expand these four tags. Now you see this 778, that's written to the L35E. So now we need to speak something to the L35E. So we'll go over here and we'll put hit enter. And there it is over here. Listen to data from the L45. I think we'll wrap up part two here. In part one, we added each processor to the other processor's I.O. configuration, making each processor able to find the other processor through the configuration. And then in part two, we actually gave the processors some subject matter that they could use for conversation. And so the first thing we did was uh, we created a message instruction in each processor, a write SIP data table write instruction. And then we took the tag data spoken to memory of the other processor. Right now, we on the left, we are the PACL35E. The PACL35E then has data to speak to the other processor, the L45. That then becomes the source element tag and we took the first element of that array and this is the data that we're going to speak by way of the write instruction to the L3 the L45 so we kind of refer to that as the L35E's mouth the write set data table write message instruction and it's going to write to a tag that exists in the other processor so the destination element you could either have both of these projects open side by side, uh, drag the cursor through the text over on the right, listen to data from L35E00, element 0, and then copy and then paste it over here in the destination element. That's actually the easiest way to do it, to keep things straight. Now, I did not have you do it that way in the lab, but it's a little bit more complicated showing you that method in printed form than it is in video form like this. At this point, we downloaded the project and we put in a value into the, in, in monitor tags, we put a value in the field. Uh, it wasn't 880 as it is here. I, I don't remember what it was, but once we hit enter, then that value popped in to the other processor in lesson two data from L35E. Then we did the same thing for 
the L45. We created a write instruction, therefore it had a mouth to speak and it took data spoken to the L35e and then spoke it to the tag in the other processor. So at this point, each processor can speak to the other. As far as answering back, that would be more sequences of message instructions. Maxi, you can use the same message instruction, but you have to write some interesting code in order to update the structure of each write instruction. Now, sometimes people do that. They use one write instruction and then they use code that alters either the path or the data or both. And this prevents enabling too many messages at a time. If you've only got one message instruction, then only one can be executed at a time. And when it's done, then you do the next piece. And of course, if two people were speaking to each other, each person can only say one thing at a time. Now they can both speak simultaneously, but each one can only say one thing at a time. One message instruction for each. So thank you for watching part two. Next, we're going to go on to part three. And in part three, we're going to continue where we left off in the lab. We have yet to do several other message instructions that we want to add to increase the, cap the communicating capability of each of the processors. Thank you.